recording. So what happens is that we did the one example and I only got to one example of graphing inequalities and we're going to finish that today. The thing though was that the method I told you or showed you is your traditional method, method methodology. Uh, continued. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that I like to show an alternative because it's what I learned teaching or learning teaching from my master teacher. And I want to give people alternatives so that they can understand what's going on. So graphing wise, everyone should be pretty solid on that. And then what will happen is that after today, I'm going to start assigning homework again. And you want to, there's no rush because obviously I know some of you are still doing the midterm, but I want you to get in the mood or the mode to start doing them again. And in addition to that, I need to provide more quizzes so that you can have just like little baby steps to prepare answering multiple choice questions. But graphing wise, everyone should be good. So here you go. It's 2x plus 3y is greater than 6. So I'm not going to get into the technicals of graphing. We should be pretty solid from that. You have the last several lectures for that. So I will zoom past them, but we'll still comment on things as necessary. So you see this equation, you know, you, I hope you know that you're supposed to put it in slope intercept form before you can do anything with it. And again, that was from the introduction of graphing, right? You will subtract two X on both sides, and then you're left with three Y is greater than negative two X plus six. And then from there, you're going to divide both sides by three. And it's always easiest to just divide each piece by three. And you're left with y is greater than negative two over three x plus two. So this is the inequality you will we'll be working with or graphing. But there are a few things that you can do right from the get-go. So if you remember from last class, remember, you just want to focus on the inequality first because then that will dictate for you the following. Remember, if it is greater than or less than, you graph with just like that. If it is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, then you graph with solid line. There you go. Okay, so that's the first thing to keep in mind because no matter what grade you're in, whether it's high school or you're doing a review in your university years and whatever the situation may be, forgetting this, I wouldn't say it's detrimental, but people tend to forget it. I forget it sometimes. So if you get in the habit of, what do you call, just catching it early on or notifying it early on or just being aware of it, you're less likely to miss it, okay? So that's first and foremost. Second is that you just graph it like normal, right? So here is your coordinate plane. Come on. There you go. Y, X, we're starting. Two, three, four, five. And you can use any technique, but I always, you know, stick to the slope intercept form method. So here you're going to see that we go two on the y axis. Remember, the slope is just this portion here. 
not including the x. So slope is a negative two thirds. And remember, you rise, you always go up first, and then you run left or right depending on the sign of the slope, right? So here we rise two, but then we run three because of the denominator. But what direction do we run? The right. Uh, try again. Oh, left, sorry, it's negative. Nope, yep, exactly, that's right. So, yep, it is to the left because, because I always ask us a follow-up question, because it is negative. And just as a friendly reminder, not to oust anyone or the person that answered, you can always remember, I may have said this more than once, remember in this example, EG, a negative two, thirds, even though it looks like it's positive on the bottom, is the same thing as saying negative 2 over 3 or 2 over negative 3. That's why this method or methodology of me showing you, hey, just always rise, always go up, and then run whether it's right positive, left negative, you'll always get the answer correct. And the reason is this navy right here, how the, how the negative sign basically can fly everywhere and it means the same thing. But as long as you remember that, then you're great. Plot the line, remember it's a dotted line now, so it's not, what do you call it, uh, solid. So you just kind of go like this. Okay. And now we have to shade, right? Shading is part of the solution and that's the part that you don't ever want to forget. Because students do one of two things in my experience. They either graph correctly and they forget to shade. Uh, they graph incorrectly and they forget to shade. Or they graph incorrectly and they shade incorrectly. Right? So there's always some kind of mix up with the shading. And then you don't have to write this part down, but just remember that shading is either going to be this region or this region. Basically, it's going to be one of two sides of the graph. It could be both like that. That's impossible. So whenever you see an inequality for shading, you're either going to get a solution that looks like this um, or a solution that looks like this. Okay. Now, how do you determine it? Now, remember, I taught you one way already. And the first method is you can think of it as pick a point. Pick a point. So I'll do that again really quick, but I want to show you the alternative so that you can understand what's going on, or at least have a visual aid so you have an alternative method for those who are visual learners. So remember when we pick a point, we pick a point that is not on the graph, right? Pick a point. not on the graph. And then you plug in this point, right? So zero, zero implies you look at the original equation, which is right here, and you plug in, right? Zero is greater than a negative two thirds times x, which will be zero, plus two. So normally when mathematicians write this, they draw a little question mark above here going, hey, is this true? And then you check, right? Zero, is that greater than positive two? So in this case, this is false. What do you do when it's false? Well, remember false has to do with the origin. The origin is located in the middle of the coordinate plane. So when it is false, you go back to the origin or the point, and on the graph, it's on this side, right? So this is the origin here, zero, zero. And since it's false, you're actually going to shade on this side, right? So you always shade the opposite region where your point is when it's false. 
if it was true, which it isn't, if it was true, right? If this problem was true, you would find the origin and you would choose this region, but you don't, right? Right? So that's how I showed you on Monday. Now this alternative way, it's actually a lot faster. It's technically easier, yet it's kind of weird to understand when you first explain it or maybe you first heard it. And this is the way I ended up teaching when I was teaching in high school because my master teacher felt this was a better way. So let me erase this shading really quick. One more time so you can look at this. So option two, so I'll just say or, or uh, you can shade by, it's actually not called anything, but I'm gonna call it the walking person. So this is what you need to know. So step one, uh, start at bottom. Uh, y axis. So imagine if you will, you're a stick person and you're And what you're going to do is you're going to move in the positive direction. Right? Start at the bottom of y axis and walk where it's positive. In other words, you're going to be starting here and then you move up and you're now here. You're going to move up. And then now I'm going to erase this origin. I'm going to erase this too. And I'll draw it over here instead. And then you're going to be here and you're going to be walking up as well. Right? You're still going to be walking up basically. So what's the point of this walking up? It's to show you that you're moving along the y-axis, right? And then that's the notion you want. You want to walk, you keep on walking up, you keep on walking up. You're just moving up, right, from bottom to top. So once you establish that, that that notion, that visual, right? You ask yourself to ask ask the person cross. The graph. The spelled graph there. Graph. Okay, has my person crossed the graph? So, what does it mean to cross? It's that orange dotted line, right? Another way to think of it, though, is that am I below or above graph? So, if you didn't realize already. Uh, let's see this color here. If you are in within this region, along the y axis, right? You are below the graph. Seems simple enough, right? Because those projections of those three little stick people are below the dotted orange line. Another way to think of this mathematically is that you are less than graph.
if you're anywhere in this region, well, if you're above it, then you are above ground. That's the same thing as saying that you are greater than the ground. Oops, apologies, greater than ground. Okay, so that's what it means in terms of distinction when you're above or below the graph, okay? Greater than or less than graph, okay? But then you might go, well, what do you mean by greater than or less than? Well, if we rewrite our original equation, which is right here, y is greater than two-thirds x plus two, right? It roughly translates whether your person is greater than or less than the graph, right? The graph is actually, that dotted line is technically on this piece, right? We learn, whether it's in algebra, high school, now, that the graph is the entire expression, the entire inequality, y greater than negative two thirds x plus two, which is correct. But the actual graphing itself, the actual linear part, the, the inequality, the linear inequality, is the second half right here that comes after the symbol. So what happens is that you ask, hey, has my person crossed the graph? You basically go, A, If yes, so if y is greater than the graph, you should be above, above, above the graph, you should be above the graph. Flies the graph. And you should below. Looking at this problem, we have person greater than the graph, or in other words, y is greater than the graph of negative two-thirds x plus two. So when you're walking along your y-axis, if you will, it's asking for the person to be greater than a graph. In other words, you have to be above the graph. That's what they're asking for. They want you to notate or dictate or show or express that, hey, I want all the y or all the values that are greater than the graph. Well, you can see that in light blue here, everybody, these three that are below, that's below the graph, so y is not greater than the graph. Whereas when you're a person and you're moving along the y-axis and you're above the graph, then you are greater than the graph. So again, as you can imagine, the answer is the same, right? You shade this region here. Okay. Actually, let me clean that up. So I can shade the actual written part. So again, those are the two methods, right? One is what I learned. One is what the textbook shows you. Method two is what I was taught when I was teaching. So it became more hands-on. So is any of the two better? Uh, probably not. But I would also say, though, that you want to keep in mind both methods because you'll find out that method one, it's easy because it's mechanical. You pick a point, you calculate, you choose true or false, and then you shade. But with this quote-unquote walking person method, 
you just have to look at the graph and you can already tell whether you're shading above or below. And it's because of the inequality. The, quali the inequality already tells you the answer, right? All Y values greater than, all Y values less than, all Y values greater than or equal, Y, all Y values less than or equal, right? It's, it's supposed to be straightforward, right? What questions here before I move on to the next example? So now, since we did a dotted one, I'm going to show you a solid one. Nothing. Uh, could you just repeat um, what the dotted and solid one mean? Sure. When the dotted or solid, you are using a dotted or solid line right here that I wrote in light blue. If the inequality involves no equal sign, then it's a dotted line. When the inequality involves an equal sign, then use a solid line. Oh, okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah, it's okay. It's just one of those things where you, you go, you go, you go, and then you're like, wait, why again? And then you're like, oh, right, 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 right. I do that. So no worries. Uh, let's see what's next. All right, cool. So let's go to example two now. And I'm willing to bet that we want to just do this with plugging in points. So I can do that. That's what the last class asked. I'm going to assume that's the case here. But before we even get there, let's grab this puppy first and make sure we do. So like I suggested, right, you have the question right here. And then you acknowledge this immediately. So that the question was, oh, how do you know whether it's dotted or solid again? This tells you immediately that A, you have to not only graph, but graph a solid line, graph solid. And then because it's an inequality, you have to shade. I mean, all of this is shading, but it's to um, ensure that So what do you do now? Same thing, right? You you graph like normal. Scroll touch graph here. Here's fine. Let's just get in. Y X. And then this is going to go down. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four, five, two. I think we need to go negative. So same technique. Start negative two. Uh, y axis, your slope, see, it is three over this time. So you rise three, one, two, three, and then we're going to run which way four? Uh, to the right. Because it's positive. Perfect. Now I keep asking that same question. It's one of those things you just have to hear, right? And again, for anyone that's not answering, again, I can't force everyone to answer, though it only helps you, not me. But the help you is that it solidifies material. So there's your solid line, right? How do I know it's solid? It's because of the inequality. We've already established that. And then when you're shading now, again, I say pick a point, sure. But really, when I say pick a point, I mean use the origin, right? Always use the origin if possible. Use origin. 
and possible. Because the only reason it would not be possible is if I give you a graph that goes through the origin itself. So what do you do? You pick zero, zero, right? Step one, you pick zero, zero, right? That implies you plug in zero to your equation. So zero for y is greater than or equal to three over four times x, which is also zero. And then the big old question mark of whether this is true or not, right? This implies that zero is greater than or equal to negative two. So this means this is true, right? Since it is true, you go back to your point, which is right here, zero, zero. Go back to the region where it is, which is right here. I know I'm a little far, but that's zero, zero right there I'm pointing at. And since zero, zero is on this side or above the graph, you would shade. If you're using a walking man thing or a walking person, you start on the bottom here and you're going to walk north. And the question you ask yourself is, once I, am I crossing the graph yet? If I haven't crossed it, I'm below. The moment I cross it, I'm above. The graph calls for y greater than or equal to the graph, y greater than or equal to 3 fourths x minus 2. So you're basically saying, hey, my person has to be greater than or aka above the graph. So if you're above the graph, you shade above the graph, right? And just for clarity purposes, right? Remember, you would not, you would never choose points on the graph, points on the graph. to pick. For example, sorry, D, you can use zero negative, right? That's on the graph. That doesn't give us any distinction in terms of where to shade. Same with this other point that we had, one comma four, right? You don't use those, right? What other questions do you guys have for me at the moment, at least? All right. Let's try another one, but this time you guys are going to do it. So write this out. I'm going to graph. X minus 2Y is less than 5. And there's a hint for you already here. I'm already going to give you the hint by saying, watch out when you graph or when you calculate. Because remember, what do you have to worry about when you are messing up? sign. When you divide or multiply by a negative, when an inequality is present, what do you have to do? Flip the sign. Flip right, it. flip the sign, change, change the direction. All of you, all three of you, I heard three voices, three different voices at least. Not I heard three voices in my head, just to be clear. The three people that responded, no matter how they describe it, it is the same notion, the same concept, right? The inequality has to change the direction it's eating, right? I'm not sure if anyone remembered from primary school, A greater than B, right? This is like the crocodile and it's eating the bigger number, that type of thing, right? So you're not changing what kind of inequality it is. You're just changing the direction of it, right? So it's, what time is it right now? It's two, almost 2.46. Yeah, so it's basically 2.46 right now. Let's give you five minutes to try this. 
Uh, if you need a little bit more time, that's fine, but I think five minutes should suffice. I'll do these little ticks here, and then if someone would be so fine to, once they're confident in their answer, feel free to walk me through. This FOT website. <sighs>
All right. So who would like to assist with getting this problem on its way? Uh, I could try to, I guess. Yeah. Yep. That's all I could ever ask of anyone. Sorry, who's this um, talking? Uh, Sarah. Sarah, go ahead. Do your thing. Um, so hey, there's like the x and then minus 2y and the less than 5, and then I rearranged it into y equals like the um, x and then the, like the intercept. And so then I ended up with negative 5 over 2 minus like 1 over 2x. Negative um, 5 over 2 minus 1 over 2x. Yeah. Um, so then, and then the sign that, is with the short end pointing to the negative five, like the short end pointing <laughs> to the negative five. So like this. like that arrow, yeah, like that. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna pause you for a quick moment right here. This is almost correct. Can someone help Sarah to see why I am saying almost correct as opposed to a hundred percent correct? What are we missing here? Um, it should be um, the negative one over two x should be first rather than the negative five over two. Ah, so if you're talking about order, that's not a big deal, right? So whether you write it like this or you write it like this, well, y is greater than negative one half x minus five halves. Either is correct. Is it conventional? This is definitely conventional to do this. Is it easier to be? Hell yeah, absolutely. But is this absolutely wrong? Nah, far from it. That's a great point to bring up. Okay. So, yes, most people like to put it in this form because it mimics, again, y equals mx plus b. There's something else we're looking for. What's off? I think um, the half is supposed to be positive. It is. Good catch. So this half is actually positive. So if you look back at your algebra, right, whether it's Sarah or anyone else for that matter, right, the thing you have to be careful is that, yes, we caught the inequality flipping or changing directions, as I mentioned earlier. However, you also want to make sure that when you're dividing or subtracting or multiplying, especially the negatives, you just want to make sure that it applies to each one. So this is the equation we're shooting for right here, right? So then you can actually continue, Sarah, because even though the negative is actually supposed to be positive, you can still correctly give me the right answer as you instruct me on how to graph. So what do I do next? Uh, wait, now I'm like tripping myself out because I'm looking at my graph and it's not right. No, 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 that's okay. The Don't worry about your graph itself. Start with where you we always start. So with the y-intercept, right? Uh, I had that at, the, at negative 2.5. Yep, that's correct. Yep, 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 yep. So negative 2.5. Right. Now, don't worry about your graph as everyone is hopefully saying along, even though you may not be saying along out loud, your slope is one over two. So what do we do from here? We... Oh, we go um, up two and then over, uh, oh wait, sorry, up one and then over two to the right. Perfect, and why do we go to the right? Because uh, it's positive. Awesome. So. So even though your graph is off, don't erase it. Heck, don't even scratch it out. This is for everyone. If you have not written everything exactly to a T like this, that's okay. That's why we have the discussion. What I would suggest is actually of scratching it all out or erasing it and like, oh my God, what the hell is going on? I would just, like I do, right? Draw arrows, draw in corrections. Put little reminders for yourself saying like, oh, watch out for this, because that's the only way that 
okay, it's not the only way, but I feel like that's a very impressive way to learn because then catch yourself doing the things that what it needs to be adjusted and then hopefully you'll you'll notice that next time when you're studying and whatnot all right cool so obviously we connect these dots but when we connect these dots is it dotted or solid uh dotted yep perfect and it's because of this so remember everyone that this guy here is going to dictate a dotted line and i'll draw that really quick right here Sorry for the funny picture. It's not completely accurate. And then you know that your answer is going to involve shading either this side or this side, right? It's going to be one of the two. Oops. I accidentally erased my arrow here. Okay. And then I can do the rest of this. So I imagine that. Everyone chose zero, zero again, right? You picked zero, zero, picked zero, zero, and you plug it in. Zero is greater than one half X minus five over two or two and a half, right? Two and a half, it doesn't matter. But as long as you know what's going on, and you have to multiply by zero. And we do the little check mark here, or question mark, I'm sorry. So everything cancels. And then you're left with just what? That zero is it greater indeed by two and a half? And you would all tell me what? A false. False or true? Oh, wait, wait. Zero is greater than, yeah. <laughs> so it's true. So what do you do, right? You backtrack, you go true to the point you picked. From the point you picked, find it on a graph. Wherever that point is, that's the region that you shade for the graph. So that's why it's, all right. And then if you do the walking person thing again, then you know it follows the same suit. Now, a funny thing about this, again, I know I'm not, um, writing the final, I mean, I have the final already uploaded on Blackboard, but I didn't write it. However, these graphing problems, they're super critical because obviously I know everyone's doing this on their paper and I'm gonna sign homework. The smoother your transition is in terms of understanding this, in terms of step-by-step, step, these actually become very easy problems. And that's really important because on a final that's multiple choice, you're not graphing. You're physically not graphing. You could graph but it takes up more time. But in a problem like this, it's so easy to give multiple choice because then I can give you four answers. I can go A, so the graph is shallow like this, right? So I can do a dotted line. I can go, oh, option B. I can give you that same dotted line. Oops, maybe that doesn't look as nice. And shallow. I give you option C. I give you that same line but solid and on top. Same line, solid, shade on bottom. And then I would go, okay, choose the correct one. Right? And then you might go, oh, that's so evil because you really have to know what's going on. And yeah, that's the point. You are supposed to know what's going on. But you can also see that they become very easy multiple choice problems because you have to identify, but you actually don't have to do that much work because you just find out that, hey, this is just the region that you're doing the shading in, and you got to figure out whether it's dotted or solid right from the beginning, and then you go from there, and that's pretty much it, okay? All right. What questions do we have on, so we're done with graphing the entire chapter now for, what do you call it, the fourth chapter, I think it's chapter four, for the algebra textbook, which means that we're left with just one section, which is the system of equations. And in short, that basically means, uh, what do you call it? It's when you have two linear equations and you have to solve for both the variables. So instead of like an X equals thing, it's like an X equals and Y equals. 
And then I'll be able to show you what that means graphically and algebraically and all those things as well. But before we get to that, just uh, pause so I can pause for a moment and ask again for the class, what other questions do you have possibly on, on this? All right. All right, that's good. So if it's no questions for now, I'm actually going to end it here so that, like I said, I promise I would give people the opportunity that need to finish their midterm still to, well, finish their midterm, right? And then for those that already submitted, you should have already received my confirmation emails and you can consider it as a nice break. And Remember, just watch for my email as always and the announcements section when I'm posting your next homework having to do with more chapter, sorry, not the single chapter itself, but more of the algebra textbook with the whole graphing and shading and inequality and no inequalities as well as whatever we go over on Monday, okay? So I will upload this you guys have access to it immediately and then once this video again of course downloads from webex we're going to put it on youtube as well